So obviously the trip that I went to, the primary reason to go there was to, of course, visit Berghain for their special Sylvester Club Nut Club Night. Sorry, um, uh, for twenty twenty for twenty twenty to twenty twenty two. I'm still a bit miffed and confused as to why they decided to throw a makeup New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day party in the in the at the beginning of June. It still doesn't make any sense to me. I know they missed out on it because of the pandemic, so they've kind of not been open. I think for maybe two and a half years it feels like, and then maybe this was just their way to kind of try to. Um, maybe get some money back in a till. I don't really know, but I don't really see the sense of doing a makeup January rave in June. It just doesn't make any sense unless there's another tie-in with the date that I'm not really aware of. So if there is that thing and you know it and you're knowledgeable of it, please leave me a comment down below. So that's the main point of going there. And then the other point of going there also is that I also wanted to check out RSO Berlin. RSO Berlin has been, is now if basically the official um, rebirth of Griesmüller, a really famous club that I used to love in Berlin that unfortunately closed down due to renovation work or whatnot. No, due to, um, due to, uh, you know, the usual stuff, fucking gentrification and whatnot, right? And, and then they obviously moved into a new site and now their kind of fully fledged club is this place called RSO. And I've been told it's got an amazing sound system. It's really well designed. There's an outdoor area to chill in. It's just a great club to be in. And of course, seeing it's Berlin, you don't see any pictures and stuff. I wanted to see it stuff in my real eyes. So the first thing I wanted to do was to check out Berghain. Of course, we go to RSO. And then lastly, the other option or the other reason why I wanted to go out there was to check out this place called Same Heads, which is a sort of, what would you say, a quote-unquote alternative anything but techno kind of space in the middle of Neukölln that everyone kind of has a lot of great things to say about and I also wanted to check out because it'd be something different than you you know listen to the same old oots, oots, oots the whole entire weekend so number one um I have to say off off rip I think I might be done with Bergheim and I think I might be done with Berlin overall especially for the next year or so because if you guys are aware, if you've been listening to the podcast, you would know that I have visited Berlin sometimes four times in a year. And I, but the main thing I try to do is to keep it to like one to twice per year. And being a fan of techno, being a fan of club culture, um, being a fan of DJs in general, the obviously the best place, the pinnacle, the top tier, the pièce de résistance of club culture in general is obviously Berlin. They do it the best there. They take it very seriously. And if you really want to experience it in its fully fledged form, that's the best place to go. Especially if you're just gonna go there for like a you know a techno weekender, I definitely recommend to go there because you can't go wrong. With regards to the club you go to, except if you go to like Matrix, every club is absolutely insane and great in their own way. But a part of me also thinks that maybe I've got too close to the sun and I'm now starting to build up a little bit of animosity and hatred around the people that frequent that place because I did leave Berkheim this time around with a little bit of a distasteful taste in my mouth concerning everything that goes on around it. First of all, the queue. Number one, the queue. Obviously, it being my fault. The plan originally was for me to get there on Saturday evening, sometime around 9 to 10 p.m., queue up, before the doors opened on that Saturday, be able to get in, listen to a couple of people play, get my get my um get my wristband of course. So then it allowed me the opportunity to come back on the Sunday evening and be able to cut the queue and get in because I already got a ticket. But I didn't do that. I left it until Sunday. So I arrived there on Sunday evening, and then of course I get there late for what I went to get there for. I arrived there, let's say like I think I arrived there like half eight or something. And the queue at half eight was like, let's say, towards the end of the metal barriers, like the the actual, sh not the metal snake thing, but the other barriers are put towards the end of it. So just before it gets to the one of the kind of kiosk, right there. So it took me. So that's where I was. We didn't move from that section of that queue until like twelve or eleven thirty at night. So three and a half hours. That queue didn't really move too much. And then by the time we did get in, I think it must have been like, you know quarter to one or something wherever it may be so we probably waited outside for around four hours just to get inside crazy and of course when you're waiting in a Bergheim queue there is no guarantee you're going to get in and they don't do 
that thing that other clubs do sometimes where if the queue is really monstrous and everyone's waiting to go in, they'll just have somebody walk down the line and just tell people, hey, you're probably not going to get him as well go home. You know what I mean? They, all they had was one guy come down and say, hey, the club is over capacity. We're going to be letting people in one one in, one out or something. I think it's something like along, along the lines of. But they just let you, they basically leave you, into, leave you in the queue and they only make the decision about whether they're going to let you in or not once you get to the front of the door which I thought was a little bit out of order, especially considering the party it was. It was like a New Year's Day party. It was a really hyped one. It was a public holiday. Uh, it was a bank holiday weekend. All that good stuff was happening. And I just think because it was so random, people were so excited to go. It would have been nice for the people that I was around, some of them who didn't get in, who were waiting just as long as I was, four and a half hours, whatnot, to get right to the door and then be told no. I just think it would be nice if they had the ability to be like, hey, you're not going to happen for you tonight. It's really busy. Maybe you come back next month, next year, whatever it may be, but zip. So you can just leave and carry on doing your other thing. Obviously, the other kind of slight good thing about Bergheim is that, or Berlin in general, is that if you do get rejected from there, there's plenty of other clubs within a five-mile radius you can go to. So it's not like they ruin your night. And it is you deciding of your own volition to go wait there outside four hours. No one's telling you to do so. So whatever. It is what it is. You go in, you do your thing. When I was in there and I was having a great time, I enjoyed all the DJs that I saw that were playing. Um, I ended up speaking to a couple, such as, Ju not speaking, but saying hi to Juliana Huxtable, who, you know, didn't really seem like they were too happy to, for me to say hi to them. But still, I did because I'm a fan. Hey, I love what you do. Keep it moving. But I don't advise you to do it because I just feel like people in general are a bit weird whenever people, I don't know, maybe it's just me and the way I come across. I don't really know. Whatever it is. She didn't seem that pleased for me to say hi. But regardless, I did it anyway. Then I saw Gerd Jansen, who unfortunately I missed because I did want to see him because I was outside in the queue for fucking four and a half hours. But then I did see him on the inside and I was able to shake his hand and tell him how great I think he is and obviously compliment him on his DJ skills because I listened to it outside in the queue. All good, all good, all good. One thing I noticed quite quickly, and I think this is because I was pretty sober and I had only maybe a couple of beers in me, which again, I don't recommend, especially if you're like me and you think you can drink beer, but you can't. And you get constipated and you want to shit, but you can't shit because there's nothing in there because it's all gas. But we move, we progress. I realized quite quickly, a lot of people that go to that space, for the most part, from what I saw, most, most of the reason they go there is an excuse to get fucked up and just an excuse to like, be sociable and to look cool. I didn't really see a lot of people that I felt like I bumped into around there who necess who like gave a shit about who was playing. Like it felt like a lot of them were just there to be seen. It's kind of turned into like a sceney, let me kind of put my face there, be at you know what I mean, it was a bit strange. Whereas I legitimately looked at this lineup and thought, wow, this is such a great time to go because it's kind of two killing two birds with one stone. Because they've got all the great people playing. It's a special night, and I can see them all in one time. Do you know what I mean? Like I can see all these amazing people who maybe be spread out across four lineups all on one. But I think that a lot of people that went there were just went there because it was a cool place to be seen at the time. It was a bank holiday weekend, a lot of good people playing, a lot of interesting people coming into the space, blah, blah, blah. So that was odd and that was weird and that was strange overall. And then in general, I just felt like the attitude of people that I met in there was just so despicable in terms of that kind of like um, sense of ownership that they weirdly have with a club and with a scene that they have not contributed nothing to in the slightest. And I don't understand where it comes from. I don't understand where this kind of unearned sense of confidence and entitlement comes from. I really do not. I can't get it out of my head how some people's attitudes were so stinky that it kind of made me think like, what do you actually do apart from get dressed up like a flipping, um, you know, cerebral palsy laden techno ninja right get it up to your eyeballs and attend parties and work in bars like, what do you actually do in this scene and i don't understand it because uh, there was a period there's a period in my t life where i was coming up in london and i wanted to be a part of the you know the nightlife scene here and i would do my club nights and i'd go and dj and i'd go to other people's club nights and i'd go to art gallery evenings and i'd go to record store launches and i'd go out on record store day i'd be around i'd be in the mix but like at different things it wasn't just all raves it was just like sometimes it'd be like a panel discussion thing it would be like a book signing whatever it may be just to kind of be in and amongst the mix but ultimately i wanted to do things to get me involved whether it was taking pictures making zines trying to design t-shirts putting on parties like i tried to do something starting a brand all of it was trying to get involved so that i could have so that i could be 
I could kind of put my notch on the kind of cultural timeline of that place that I was at at the moment or at that given time. Whereas over there, it feels like people are just like, they feel as if like they are a part of it and they've done something just because they're going out and they have a real big ego about it. Like they were going on and carrying themselves like they were fucking Kanye without any of the work to back it up. And I just couldn't understand it because I'm somebody who has real delusional self-confidence right in terms of what i believe i can do and the levels that i can achieve but most of my delusion comes from my god-given belief and actual evidence that i have in hand that i think i'm better than a lot of people but it's because the evidence is there these guys don't have any evidence and they think they're better than everyone i don't understand it and it really gives a weird vibe when you're in there because i felt like those spaces in general, techno clubs in general, nightlife in general, overall, for the most part, should be an excuse to take drugs, to get really drunk, to dance a lot, to maybe meet some interesting people, hear some cool DJs, play some cool music, and then go home. That's all I thought it was. I, I never ever felt like it was anything more than that. And if you want to make it more than that, you can by participating. You start your own club night, you open your own club, you start your own brand of liquor whatever it may be to participate you do it you become a door person you start designing flyers it doesn't matter if you want to take it a step further but if you just want to be a punter and just buy tickets and attend stuff the joy of it is just be able to go in to get high get drunk dance you know maybe pick up somebody maybe not maybe make some friends and then go home it wasn't like you were walking in there acting as if you owned the place just because you go there quite often. I do not understand that personality is so utterly, utterly, utterly bizarre. Really, really bizarre. And it really did grind my gears. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, of course, my favorite subject in it was this kind of, and I think I mentioned it to a couple of black guys that I was in there speaking, especially the older types, who I felt like were way more um, friendly than the younger ones. But there was a, re there's a really strange vibe. And again, maybe it's just me from being a tourist. I haven't lived there. Like some dumb, 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 dummy told me actually once I was in there. And actually, I just laughed it off and pretended like it made sense. But I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're like, oh, um, trust me, living here is far different than coming here as a tourist. I was like, really? From being a London, you think there's a big difference between what you do here day to day and what we do in London day to day. It's that different to you, yeah? All right, cool. Safe. And as well, like, you know what I mean? Framing your whole personality around techno, really? Really? Your whole personality is based around wearing... Be and again, that's not a personality. Just adopting a uniform that you're just wearing to wear all black. You're going to wear double sole Dr. Martin boots. You're going to wear black bikinis in the club, fishnets all the time. That isn't a personality. That doesn't make you interesting. That's a uniform anyone and everyone could do. Just go on any popular you know, techno Instagram page, copy what someone's wearing and go, and no one will be able to tell the difference between you, somebody that just copied the outfit from Instagram, and somebody that's been going to Berlin and Bergheim for flipping seven plus years, as someone told me. It doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. But anyway, going back to the point I was going to make, there's a really strange vibe around some of the black people that live and breathe that whole techno scene in Berlin, I feel like. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just, again, maybe it's just me projecting. Maybe it's me projecting my own insecurities. And maybe I'm the one that's giving the bad vibes. I'm putting a disclaimer out there. But in general, I've felt like I've come across, the. I've had the worst interactions with people who looked like me over there because I felt like, reading into it again without even speaking to them and, and trying to read into their minds which is bizarre and dumb but i'm attempting to because the podcast i'm allowed to chat shit it felt like they wanted to be the only cool black guy in the village and then when someone else comes along they get a little bit like angry and mean because they feel like you might be more interesting or you might take away from the attention that they get because they're the quote-unquote Turkish black person within their group. Which I don't understand because once you're out there in Germany, it's pretty clear that you're in Germany. So no, unless you're Caucasian, you're always going to be looked at as an other anyway. It doesn't matter if you can speak German. doesn't matter if you've got a residence there. doesn't matter if you've got your own apartment there. doesn't matter if you've got a full-time job. doesn't matter if you're working part-time. doesn't matter if you're working cash in hand. It doesn't matter. If you're not white and you're in Germany, you know you're not white. Like, it's just pretty clear. 
you know what I mean? It's pretty bloody clear in that country where you kind of fall in terms of the hierarchy of races. It's pretty obvious. So you would imagine with that being said, there'd be a lot more kinship because we're all kind of going through the same thing. It doesn't matter if you work for Novation, doesn't matter if you work for SoundCloud, doesn't matter if you work in a flip flipping bar. If you're somebody that's non-white, you're going to go through hell living in that country because it's just difficult and Germans are just a little bit, you know, different than us UK people, you would imagine, right? It just is what it is. But for the most part, it isn't like that. So that was a very strange and a weird thing. But on the positive side of things, the older black folks I did meet in there, a couple of cool people. There's a specifically this one guy that I met whose nickname is Spanky for you know, read inside what you want. He was an absolute diamond, really lovely person. Who I happened to bump into as I was kind of kind of coming back in. But uh, but it was really interesting and really saddening for me in general to be in a space like that and to feel as if like there was no comadre or com comadre whatever that fucking term is between people that look like me out there which is dumb i know you shouldn't be seeking kinship of people based off the color of their skin i know it but usually from what i've done with my travels and gone about in places when you see someone that looks like you out in a far-flung place there is a weird connection because for the most part there's not many of you out there so there's definitely gonna be an interesting story of for what brought both of you out there at that at that given moment and for sure that person could give you some words of advice point in the right direction between certain things just to kind of you know or maybe just alleviate some of your fears so that you can kind of enjoy your holiday wherever it may be or maybe just say hi and bye whatever it may be but that didn't end up happening so that kind of left me with a sour taste in my mouth which then made me think in general that I might need to give Berlin a break anyway it might not be a Berkheim thing it might not be a Berlin thing it might be more so a me thing because if I'm really honest if I'm really really honest and I'm really honest and this is a place I want to be honest in this podcast the main reason why I used to go to Berlin quite often was primarily to kind of run away from my day-to-day -day life because I had so many, I would say, quote-unquote, demons because I had such a... Uh, because I was such a crossroads in my life and I was hating my daily existence, I kind of just wanted to black out and not kind of remember what was going on at home. And I kind of used to do that often when I used to go out sometimes as well. I'd kind of get just super blasted to the point where I wouldn't remember just so that I could go back home, wake up and it's 3 p.m. and then start all over again. And I felt like when I went out there, because I was so obsessed and I was such a geek for flipping dance music culture, for DJs, for club culture, I'd, I'd read interviews with founders and architects that design spaces and soundscape designers. And, you know, I'd, I'd go really deep into the whole entire thing, right? I, I remember one time I read the entire back archives of flipping Little White Earbuds, right? Just really engrossed and getting deep into this culture, right? When I went out there, I was automatically like, wow, I get it. I understand why people love this place. I get it, I get it, I get it. But obviously it arrived at such a perfect time for me because I was going through a tough time at home and you go to this place where it's essentially like an adult's playground that allows you to indulge in all your things that you want to indulge in when it comes to nightlife. And it's, it's, effectively, it's, it's a city built off the back of nightlife. It's not really a place that I would imagine you would go to if you're not really a fan of like clubs and whatnot. Generally, it would be a hard place to sort of live in. But overall... I feel as if like now that I'm in a better space in my life that going there as often now as I was before in the past isn't really serving me well. And if anything, it's making me starting to hate a city that I quite highly rate and the people I don't mind either, but I was starting to hate the people. I was starting to hate everyone walking around with a fucking beer in their hand. It's like, bruv, like, do you, what is that? Is that every day's beer time? You can't just have a bottle of water. You can't have a Coca-Cola. You just have to carry a beer in your hand. Like, it's just like, act like you've been here before at least for one moment. Do you know what I mean? That was starting to annoy me. It was starting to annoy me seeing guys with flipping, you know, handlebar moustaches, like sketching in pubs and restaurants and stuff, like illustrating. It's like, what? So this is when you suddenly got an inspiration to turn into fucking Picasso in the middle of a bar. But then I remembered myself, I used to be the guy that would go to Berlin and put, pull up with a flipping book and be reaching and be reading a flipping Nietzsche book in the middle of flipping Neukon so I can't speak about that sort of thing so all of this sort of resentment I'm kind of projecting onto it was maybe because I've realized that oh this place isn't for me anymore but it's also a place that I love and I want to kind of give a chance for me to fall back in love with and maybe to kind of you know in as they say absence made the heart grow fonder maybe kind of space out my times that I go there so instead of going there twice per year three times per year because I think I was actually meant to go there again in July and then go back again in October I'm just going to give it a break for the entire year and just go back again next year 
so most likely I'll probably do one one trip a year basically I'll be going to um Berlin and stuff and be hanging out there just to kind of get my techno fix and I won't be going there for long I'll just be going there from like Friday until Monday it doesn't even though Ber, you know Ber, Ber kind of thing sometimes closes on a Tuesday depending on what time it's open I'm just going to keep it tight get everything done that weekend and just come back home because you know it's not the most beautiful city in the world. Um, there's a lot of poverty around there. Um, it's difficult to kind of watch, especially some of the people in the Turkish community kind of struggle to just kind of, you know, uh, engross themselves in Berlin or German culture overall. There's like a weird thing going on between Turkish people and like Gypsy Romanians or whatnot there too that I, that was kind of witnessed from afar that was strange. I was like, you, you're both looked at, you're both kind of looked down upon, but then they also don't like each other also. But I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's definitely something that's historical and not something that's just based upon what's going on over there. And um, seeing people struggle over there collecting tins and bottles, it's just, it's just, it can, it can bum you out a bit. That's what I'm saying. It can bum you out a bit, especially if you're not like super high and drunk all the time. And then of course, going into one of the best clubs in the world and seeing people who are spending more time in the toilets, you know, taking lines and bumps and whatnot not then actually join the music that can also bum you out because it's like you guys queued all this time i mean people got turned away for this thing and then all you're doing is spending time just doing drugs the whole entire time it's like come on man like let's let's do some and then go and enjoy the music and dance in it but you know whatever whatever it may be so that was basically my review 